Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at electrical potential difference which is part of the electrical fields topic for AQA A level physics. Now in today's lesson we're going to try to calculate the work done when a charged particle moves in an electrical field. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson we should be able to define absolute electrical potential, detail the properties of electrical potential in an electrical field and can consider the concept of when work is done in an electrical Electrical field, which falls into the electrical potential part of the AQA specification for A-level physics. Now, in the previous lesson, we defined the concept of absolute electrical potential. Any charged object inside an electrical field will have an absolute electrical potential. So the absolute electrical potential is the electrical potential energy stored in the object per unit positive charge due to being, lo due to being located at that point in the field. So any charged object in an electrical field becomes a store of electrical potential energy. Now electrical potential energy is a scalar because it's stored in an object but the, the abs and it's an absolute quantity as it's not dependent on any other factor except the electrical field. Now we can use the definition of absolute electrical potential which is a vector to find the definition of electrical potential. Now electrical potential is the work done per unit positive charge to move a charged object from infinity to a point in the electrical field. Now at infinity we've defined the electrical potential to be zero because the object is not in the electrical field. So inside the electrical field the electrical potential is non-zero as it's become an electrical potential energy store due to being in the field. Now this value for electrical potential is either positive or negative depending on whether there's an attractive force or there's a repulsive force with the charged object being inside of the field. Now note the difference. Absolute electrical potential is the energy stored per unit positive charge due to a charged object being placed in the field. But electrical potential is the work done per unit positive charge in moving a charged object into the electrical field from infinity. So you've got the two slightly similar but slightly different definitions. Now this actually means that electrical potential and absolute electrical potential will always have the same magnitude. That's because you're taking a value from infinity so you're subtracting zero zero from it, so you're going to get the same numbers if you didn't subtract zero from it. However, the direction might alter as the electrical potential considers attraction and repulsion. Now this leads to a fundamental concept in physics. Moving an object into different values of potential needs work to be carried out on the object. So if a charged object moves between areas of different potential, work must be done into or out of the object. So if a charged object moves between areas of different potential, the, the, the work will be done done into or out of the object and the direction of this work is given by either the attractive or the repulsive nature of the force. So if we consider the following electrical field, now the dashed lines in the electrical field line diagrams represent the different potentials found in the electrical field. So charged objects can move between different areas of electrical potential. So, but this requires work to be done. So what do we have to do when this takes place? Well, we say that the charged object has moved due to a difference in potential or more commonly a potential difference. This is the process behind, behind how all currents are produced in electrical circuits. A potential difference causes a current flow a current flow, a movement of charged particles. Now the potential difference, or delta V, is calculated by working out the difference between the potential areas the charged object is moved between. So in this example, the potential difference is 300 volts minus 180 volts, because that's where the charged object was moved from and to, so therefore it's 120 volts. Now a charged object in an area of potential difference will accelerate, and this concept was covered previously when we looked at charged particles in electrical fields. There was a potential difference between the two plates that the charged particle moved between, so it caused the particle to accelerate in that plane. Now this happens because the electrical potential is the energy at each level per unit charge, so therefore the potential difference is the work done per unit charge needed to move a charged object. And this is the definition for potential difference that you encountered during the electricity module. So this gives us the following equation. A potential difference is equal to the 
work done over charge or work done on a charged object is equal to charge of the object times by the potential difference. So this equation tells you the work done needed to move a charged object between two points of potential difference in an electrical field. The Q term in this equation refers to the charge of the object moving, not the charge of the object producing the field. This occurs as the equation refers to the work done on the object in the field, so the charge must be that of the object which is moving. Now, previous equations such as electrical field strength and potential work out the properties of the field itself, not the objects in the field, so need the charge of the object producing the field. Now, this equation also tells you that the work done needed to move a charged object is directly proportional to the potential difference if the charge of the object remains constant throughout. And it also tells us that the work done needed to move a charged object is directly proportional to charge if the potential difference remains the same. Now, it's very important to note that in the diagram, the dashed line shows the plane in the field where the electrical potential is the same. So everywhere along a dashed line, the electrical potential is the same value, whether it be 300 volts, 240 volts, 180 volts, 120 volts. Now, as the potential along the line is always the same or equal, we call this a line of equipotential. Now, work is needed to be done to move a charged object between planes of different potential, but there's no change in potential along a line of equipotential. So what this means is that charged objects can move along lines of equipotential without any work being done, without any energy change in store in this particular example. So this means a charged object can travel along an equipotential line without any energy being transferred. Now, in a radial field, the lines of equipotential are spherical spheres. Now, in your electrical field diagrams, lines of equipotential are always represented by dashed lines. Now, remember, no work is done when a charged object travels along an equipotential line. So an electrical charge can travel along any equipotential line without any work being done. Now, the lines of equipotential are found at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the field lines of the electrical field. So you, be, you will be expected to deduce the lines of equipotential from an electrical field line diagram. So for example, this is a uniform field. Now in the uniform field, the lines of equipotential are flat planes, because remember we're representing our lines of equipotential as dashed lines. No work is done when you travel along this surface of equipotential. So the electrical charge will can move around any part of the plane without any work being done. And because the lines of equipotential are 90 degrees to the field lines of the plane, they form those flat planes. Now, once again, like we mentioned before, you'll be expected to deduce the lines of equipotential from the electrical field line diagrams. So what have we looked at in today's lesson? Hopefully we understand the concept of absolute electrical potential, including the zero value at infinity and that of electrical potential difference. We know that work done in mo for a moving charge is given by work done is equal to charge times by a potential difference. We understand the concept of equipotential surfaces and the idea that no work can be done moving a charge along an equipotential surface. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can define absolute electrical potential, detail the properties of electrical potential in an electrical field, and then consider the concept of work done when you are in an electrical field. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson looking at electrical potential difference in the electrical fields topic of AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.